Fatality. Over the past number of years, Nia Jax has garnered a reputation for being an unsafe and reckless worker. Fans often cite her as the single most reckless wrestler in the entire company, and a history of injuring talent certainly backs this up. Despite this established problem, WWE continued to feature Nia in a prominent role with seemingly no lasting consequences or punishment for her actions or fan resentment towards her. With that being said, join us now as WrestleMania discusses the WWE and their Nia Jax problem. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. When a wrestler is of a certain size, it allows them to be booked in a certain way. Legendary talents such as The Big Show and Andre the Giant were booked as giants because they were indeed giants. However, despite them having a huge size advantage, it also forces them to be in a huge position of trust and to look after the smaller talent in the match. Naturally, the larger talent will be on the majority of the offense, meaning it will be the smaller talent's job to bump and sell around the talent. But this becomes a position of power but also a position of responsibility. It is on the burden of the larger talent to look after and protect the smaller talent accordingly. This is something that the aforementioned Andre, Big Show and even talents like Mark Henry and Awesome Kong have always done extremely well and taken great pride in doing so. Nia Jax would sign for WWE in 2014 as part of a developmental deal. Her prior work was that of a plus size model, but she had always been a fan of WWE and it existed in her blood. Nia, of course, is the cousin of one of the greatest WWE talents of all time, The Rock. With this relation certainly comes a degree of expectation. Naturally, people would expect a relative of The Rock to be prominently featured rather quickly, maybe even before they're even ready in some areas, as the name alone comes with a certain degree of advantage. Notwithstanding this, Nia would make her NXT debut in 2015 and would have a remotely decent run on the yellow and black brand. It's worth noting here there really isn't a documented history of Nia being reckless in NXT. For the most part, she was professional and careful during this time period and even had solid to excellent matches with the likes of Bailey and Asuka. Nia would then move on to the main roster as part of the 2016 brand split and she would be featured on the Raw brand. Here she would be showcased in a continued prominent role which included a WrestleMania moment when she won the Raw women's title at WrestleMania 34 from Alexa Bliss. Power of Nia Jax, Ooh, shoulder breaker. Wow. The main roster presentation of Nia has been that of a dominant force. This is no doubt similar to her initial NXT presentation, however, she showed natural signs of vulnerability during her NXT matches. Nia would begin to show signs of recklessness in matches shortly after being called up to the Raw brand. For example, on Raw in 2017, Nia would fail to catch Charlotte Flair when Charlotte was performing a top rope moonsault. It meant Charlotte crashed and burned to the outside. In the very same match, Nia went for a shoulder breaker on Charlotte, but Nia smashed Charlotte's head into her knee instead of her shoulder. No doubt an extremely dangerous error on the part of Nia and one she had mistakenly done previously with Asuka. It was at this point fans started noticing the recklessness a lot more. Bailey was supposed to be featured in a prominent match at 2017's SummerSlam pay-per-view, but this was cancelled after Nia recklessly threw her in the ring, forcing her to land awkwardly on her shoulder. Then, more incidents happened. Bailey had a massive gash on her neck following yet another match with Nia that looked like something from a horror film. It became clear that there were more cases that we as an audience weren't aware of. In 2018, Ember Moon teamed with Ronda Rousey against Nia and Tamina on Raw. Ember's boyfriend Matthew Palmer tweeted out, Hope this unsafe moron doesn't hurt my wife again, as Nia and Ember were wrestling in the tag match. The cases just piled up and up and WWE failed to reposition her on the card, as she would continue to be featured and she would continue to hurt her female opponents. Then, most notably during the build to Survivor Series 2018, during a SmackDown invasion of Raw, Nia would punch Becky Lynch straight in the face, breaking her nose and giving her a concussion. It's worth noting that a basic work punch is taught to every wrestler within the first week of wrestling school, so there was really no excuse whatsoever for this to happen. 
Even if Naya accidentally executed the work punch, it begs the question of why Naya had a loaded fist and executed it with such force to cause a broken nose and a concussion. WWE then weirdly positioned Naya to use this as her character as she would brag about injuring Becky but this didn't really get her over. It was more of a resentment towards her than strong compelling heel work, or the so-called go away heat. This injury also caused Becky to be taken out of the biggest match of her career against Ronda at Survivor Series just from basic recklessness. In a very strange borderline ironic way, Nia's best matches in her WWE career have been with Ronda Rousey. At both the Money in the Bank 2018 and TLC 2018 pay-per-view events, these two had some really great matches. Ronda is one of the few women that have wrestled Nia and have come out injury free. This opens up a whirlwind of questions. Did Nia put extra effort into the matches out of fear of being reckless with a former UFC champion and the consequences that her recklessness could implement? It's certainly an interesting angle to look at Nia's matches with Ronda. However, if this is indeed true and Nia felt the need to be extra careful out of fear of who she was wrestling, why isn't she taking this attitude towards all of her matches with smaller talents? Is she therefore abusing her position and expressing a lack of care and diligence? As mentioned previously, it's her job as a larger talent to make sure the smaller talent is safe at all times during every bump that they have to take. But now here's where things become problematic. We have established that Naya has a long history of being reckless and injuring fellow talents, therefore this surely doesn't put her in a position to criticise the recklessness of other wrestlers, does it? I was so angry, I was like, no. Mm -hmm. I was like, she cannot do this anymore. I, will, I personally would not allow her to get back in the ring to, to, to get hurt again. Well, in a public video chat on 8th April that featured the likes of Paige, Renee Young, Natalia, the Iconics, and Nia herself, Nia declared that she previously went to WWE management to complain about a certain female wrestler being reckless in the ring and injuring her friend Alexa Bliss. It quickly became apparent that she was referring to Ronda Rousey, as Ronda had previously given Alexa a concussion in the ring. Fans questioned the professionalism of all this. For a talent to go on a public video chat and criticise a fellow talent in this manner was simply uncalled for. You could even see how uncomfortable the talent were in the video with the majority of them looking down as they clearly didn't want to be part of the discussion. This was incredibly hypocritical for Nia to do. She has a long established history of injuring fellow wrestlers but she felt she of all people was in a position to criticise and complain about the recklessness of another talent. It really doesn't make sense as to what's going on in her head. To make things worse, on the next edition of Monday Night Raw that Nia competed on, Nia would recklessly execute a buckle bomb on Kyrie Sane that featured a horrible landing that looked like it knocked Kyrie out. It even came with an audible scream. Fans soon picked up on this and expressed their opinion on this reckless behaviour. It was clear from this there was no accurate timing and precision, but Nia just opting to recklessly throw Kyrie into the turnbuckle without any care and attention. This blew up on Twitter so much so that Nia herself acknowledged the backlash in a tweet referencing the incident. The issue here is that time after time, Nia is using her reckless actions and passing them off as in-character heel moves. Her character has become one that is a liability and one that fans dread to see. This dread not coming from compelling effective heel work, moreover a desire not to see talents get injured. This is a rare situation and one that's never been seen before. There's no heat there. Heat implies that the heel is over in their role and the fans want to see someone beat the talent, but that desire simply isn't there. We believe if WWE was to book Becky Lynch vs Nia in a featured match, fans would simply not want to see it out of fear that Nia would recklessly injure one of the most popular female wrestlers in the company, which is in an awful position to be in as a talent. Now, we've established that Nia is a dangerous talent and is someone that arguably shouldn't be wrestling. But what do WWE do with her? Is it the simple solution to send her back to WWE development to sort out these issues? Potentially, as talents such as The Big Show and Mark Henry have previously thrived by spending some time in development, but would it really help? The issue isn't directly her in-ring work, it's the careless attitude she's taking in her in-ring work that's the problem. Well, can this be fixed? From WWE's perspective, they may not want to damage the healthy relationship with The Rock and Nia being pushed down the card or even sent back to developmental could impact this. However, The Rock is extremely self-aware, so we're not sure that if Nia was punished in any way for being reckless and injuring her co-workers that The Rock himself would have a problem with this approach. After all, she has said in the past that she wanted to stand on her own two feet, so no special treatment should be offered in relation to this. The 
bottom line is Nia Jax is her own enemy. And there's no obvious intent to hurt, but a simple apology has escaped her. She believes in her own hype and character, thus making the situation far worse than it is. The one thing that is clear is that she has to stop. One of these days, someone is going to get seriously hurt in the ring with Nia, and then consequences will follow. That being the damage could have been avoided a long, long time ago if WWE actioned appropriately. But what do you guys think of Nia Jax and her recklessness? What could be done? Let us know in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.